Hey, welcome back to the shop, everybody. Today I'm going to show you how you take those pallet slats and turn them into something nice like this. So for the last few videos, we've been breaking down pallets and pulling off the slats and planing them and milling them up into really nice lumber. I received that tongue and groove bit that we were talking about, and I've been working on setting up my router table to cut these really nice tongue and grooves in the pallet slats. Hopefully you can see that tongue there and then on the other side the groove. By using those tongue and grooves I'm able to take these slats which are measuring 3 8 of an inch in width and laminating those together and getting a really nice flat board. I think you can probably see that that's a, I mean this thing is as flat as a piece of plywood. I've really been just working on a few pieces just to make sure that it's going to work okay and I've got these two pieces so far um, milled up and uh, laminated together, glued together and then I ran through the planer once, once more just to smooth them out. And these things are really, really solid. You can see there the router bit that's mounted into, this, into the router table and that will actually cut the tongue. And here's the bit that actually cuts the groove. So it took me a little while to find these router bits. Most of the router bits you buy are made to cut stock between a half inch and three quarter inch in thickness. My material is only three eighths of an inch in thickness so I had to find a bit that was specific for that. So the two bits that I bought are made by Infinity Tools and they have a half inch shank and uh, they uh, cut a tongue and groove that's made for three eighths of an inch to five eighths of an inch stock. I'll be happy to put a link in the description to the uh, location I found these uh, bits because they were a little bit hard to find. So I think I've showed you my router table before. I'm using the uh, Craig um, table system with the Craig fence and uh, this has been a really really nice tool for me. My router table has dust collection entering the fence and also dust collection entering below the router. I have it set up with a single blast gate and then just opening the blast gate and then there's two uh, hoses, a four inch hose and a two and a half inch hose that goes uh, to the router table itself. It actually works pretty good. It actually collects a lot of the dust that's created by the router. I put some pieces of rubber around the door to the, uh, to the box below the router that uh, houses the dust collection hose and when I turn it on, you can definitely, it definitely seals really well. It's pretty difficult to open, so you get a really nice seal, and therefore you get a lot of that, uh, a lot of that dust being collected into the dust collector. So one of the reasons it's been taking so long to mill up these pallet slats is I'm trying to be sure that I can reproduce the results in the future. I've really been taking my time and trying to develop some jigs so I can set everything up again when I want to mill up some more pallets in the future. So for example, here's a jig I made to get my router fence in the right position. Both of these jigs have two functions, one of which is to get the router bit the correct uh, height off of the table. And the second function is to get the router fence the right distance from the uh, router bit. So this one is for the tongue and this one is for the groove. Probably going to be difficult to see because it's so far from the camera, but I can take the jig and I can place it here and then when I'm uh, elevating or lowering the bit into position, I can line it up with the uh, tongue on this little jig. The other thing I can do with the jig is I can place it in the miter fence here and then I can slide the, uh, the, the, the router fence into position and as you can see it fits perfectly here between the, fen the uh, fence and, the, and the, uh, the groove here. Depending on whether I'm using the tongue bit or the groove bit there's a little a slightly different distance that I set the fence uh, to assure that the uh, pieces fit together perfectly. So let's go ahead and run a few of these pieces through here and I'll show you how it works and then we can move on to do some gluing.
The reason I have these two pieces of wood clamped here is it prevents me from taking out too much material whenever I'm actually routing the, uh, the wood. My fence does not come forward enough and it was taking out a really large amount of, of material and that limiting what I, can, what I can build with it. So I put a tongue on a bunch of these longer pieces of pallet slats. So why don't we go ahead and set up the router table and put the groove in the pieces as well. So having those two, these two jigs I showed you, I don't have to worry about moving the router fence now and getting the, uh, the fence back in the correct position. If I hadn't have made those jigs, it probably would be a slow process trying to get the, uh, the fence back to the correct spot. That's the bit that cuts the tongue. So now I can take my jig and I can lower the bit into the position that I want it. So I can just slide the jig there and then position the router bit so that it's cutting exactly the right spot. So right there is looks really good. That's going to let the, uh, the tongue fit into the groove perfectly. Now setting the fence to the right uh, distance from the bit is really easy. I can just place this little jig there into the uh, miter fence and then just bring the fence until it touches. So now just like that, we're ready to go ahead and start cutting the uh, grooves on the slats. So I've got a tongue and groove on all the boards that I want to glue up. So I've got my clamps all laid out and I'm going to go ahead and start orienting the boards to the position I want to glue them up in and then we can glue them together. I've got my clamps all ready and I've also got my four foot carpenter's level that I'm going to use as a straight edge because as I start uh, tightening the boards together I don't want them to warp at all. As I lay the boards out I want to make sure the grain is alternating some. I don't want all the grain to be turned the same directions. So that's one of the reasons I like to lay it out first before I glue it up. So I've got the boards laid out where I want them and I've got a, I've kind of got a plan here for gluing them up. I don't know how well, how well you can see, but you can see that these two boards, the grain is going in, and also look at this one as well, the grain is going in different directions and that'll keep the uh, panels from wanting to bow. So I'm going to go ahead and start applying glue to these, uh, to these joints and I'm actually applying the glue to the groove portion of the joint because I think it's going to be easier to hold the glue into the spot that I want it.
right guys, so I actually glued up two panels all the same time. That was really hard to do, so I probably won't do that again. So we'll check back up on this in the morning and we'll see uh, how our glue up did. So it's been overnight since we glued up the panels. Let's go ahead and get the weight off of those and also uh, unlock the clamps. So there's oak and there's pine here. I didn't glue the oak and pine together into one solid panel. I didn't put any glue in this joint, so I'm gonna gently try to try to pop these two apart without breaking. There's a few spots where the glue built up a little bit on the back side of the wood, so I'm gonna gently scrape that off before we run it through the planer so I don't gum up my planer with that uh, wood glue. So we got a really nice panel glued up using the tongue and groove joinery. Let's go ahead and uh, run that through the planer a few times and uh, clean up the surface and then we can really see how pretty the panel will be. So I've got the panels really nice and smooth on the planer. So now I'm going to go ahead and take it through the table saw and just take that, take the groove off. So we got a nice, uh, a nice straight edge on the bottom of the panel. Next, we can just go ahead and cross cut those to length. One of the ways we can tell if our joints are gonna be strong is we can just break the ends here and see where they break. And as you can see, they're not breaking in the glue joints, they're actually breaking in the middle of the panels. So so the glue joints are actually stronger than the panels themselves. So that's a good sign. So here's the two panels we just created. Hopefully you can see them pretty well. I think they turned out pretty good. I really like how you can see the nail holes down the center of the panels. It really gives it a lot of character. Here's the oak one we made. You got the nail holes going right down the middle of the panels. I left them long because I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to use them for yet, but I'll definitely put them to good use in a project. All right, guys, so we've got actually four panels made up so far. We've got a small one here that's pine, another small one that's pine, and then we've got a large pine, and we've got a large oak. So I'm going to make up some more panels, and then I'm going to come up with a project to use these for. If you've got some ideas on what would be a cool project to use uh, these panels for, let me know. I think using these panels instead of some, you know, plywood you get at your local box store would be a, a cool idea. I mean, it saves you a lot of money. It is a little bit of effort, but it saves you a lot of money. And it also reuses this uh, really valuable material that otherwise might go to the landfill. In the last video, many of you guys told me that I had the, uh, the cyclone uh, set up incorrectly. And you're, you're right. I had the, uh, the 90 degree in the wrong place. It needed to go underneath the lid. 
now it's working perfectly. I really appreciate the advice. I think we're out of time today, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.